What's up everybody, today we're making this DIY dust cyclone extractor out of two Home Depot buckets, a three horsepower shop vac, that's a very small one, it's a three gallon little shop vac, produces about 80 cubic feet of pressure, and this Home Depot bucket setup can withstand 50. So my hope, my hope is that this doesn't just implode on itself when I first use it. If it does, we'll have to build like a pressure relief valve, but we'll get to that when we get to that if we have to, hopefully we don't. But we're gonna get to the build video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about it and if I can improve it anyway. So hope you guys enjoy the video. In order to build this DIY dust cyclone collector thing, we're gonna need three PVC connectors. That thing is stuck in there. I literally cannot remove it, so it's staying in there. We'll need a 45 degree elbow. We'll need a 90 degree elbow. And these are all at an inch and a half in diameter on the inside. So this PVC PEX pipe thing is an inch and a half in diameter as well fits in here nice and snug. A little too snug because I, I, I literally can't get that off. One thing we do need though is we need two quick connect caps. All they are just rubber gaskets. That's what we're going to be using them as at least. We'll cut a hole for our hose to fit in. That way it creates that airtight seal because we're not sealing this with glue or anything like that. It's just all going to be pressure fitted. And then on one of the caps for our Harbor Freight hose that we bought, this guy fits here perfectly. Like it's, it's pretty flush. So we can use this guy right here on the inside with the pipe going over it tightening it so it's a permanent connection and then it's actually a really nice fit with our hose. And the hose I picked up is from Harbor Freight. It's just a sump pump, it was like 14 bucks, but it's 24 feet of hose for 14 bucks. That's a pretty good deal, I feel like. So the reason why we're using two buckets is because it already makes an airtight seal as they close together. So one thing we have to do before anything else is we have to prep the bucket. You could cut a little notch down here to easily get the hook out, but it's, it's metal. You can easily just turn it any direction you wanna grab it. You pull it towards you and then you push up and it pops out right here where the lip is at. You just want to cut down there and this is definitely not going to be a pretty cut. It's a razor blade. Okay. <clears throat> Man, new blades are super sharp. Come on, go. We can do it. <laughs> I did it. And cool thing is we have a hula hoop. It's beautiful. You know, while I was beveling this, I realized it doesn't look like the guy's bucket that he did originally. I feel like Home Depot changed their bucket design so this doesn't work. We're, we're gonna see if it works though. Check out this sweet curl I got going on. Oh, no, no, don't, don't fail me now. Hang on, I got it. No! I give up. All right, you're here with me the first time we're doing this. Let's go. Moment of truth, moment of truth, moment of truth. Oh, wait, that's a, it's not a bad fit. Hang on. Okay, it's kind of a bad fit. Hold up, hold up. Sir, please work with me. Oh no, do I have to cut it down here now instead? Oh, if I do, that's gonna be annoying. I might have to. Hang on, just get in the hole. Oh, bitch, Paul, why didn't you just go home? That's your home! Are you too good oh, yeah. for your home? Where do I cut now? Don't even know. Maybe up here? Cut that one instead? I thought I had that to deal with. Ugh. Okay, cut it a little shorter. Hopefully that works because I feel like these buckets flare out more. Please fit. Oh, oh, oh. oh it's fitting. Hang on. Oh, oh, we're doing it again. Get in there. Oh. So I take about an inch off extra and it fits. I'm gonna have to bevel it though. After beveling the top of the bucket, flip it around to the underside. And as you guys can see here, there's some low spots. I'm using the light itself to show you guys this. And you wanna pick the lowest spot you can find on here. There's three of them. There's one right here, here, and here. Once you find the low spot, get your connector and just trace out the hole that you're gonna cut. And now we don't want this to be like a perfect cut. We want to make it just big enough to where this guy goes through. So we, know we want a nice airtight fit. So we're gonna go back around again, second hole, just to make sure everything fits and nothing with my OCD, no words are being damaged. That's all we're doing. Good news for me is this little divot stand here, whatever you want to call it. It's the perfect size for this PVC pipe. So I don't have to mark it out. Quarter of an inch. Oh, that's the right size. Okay, cool. Tighten this guy on here. Eh. What we got? The whole saw I need. God, that's gonna be horrendous. We're gonna gently put that on there, and we're gonna put this whole saw on top of it. Oh, sorry, you guys can't see that. We're just gonna 
do this. Eyeball it and it should be fine, right? Yeah, it should be fine. And now we have this Frankenstein monster that we're gonna use to drill a hole here because I don't want to use my uh, razor blade to cut this. Yeah, that should, that should work, right? Oh yeah, that's not going anywhere now. Remember, the only thing with the fear is fear itself. <laughs> Second gear, let's go. That looks pretty good, right? Maybe not, I don't know. Yeah, you know, we're gonna make a new hole, we'll go right here. No, no, no. Yes. That is terrifying. Oh, it worked. Yeah. I mean, yeah, of course it worked. I knew it was going. There, we got it out. Oh, it's fuzzies everywhere. But the plastic. I mean, like, it fits. A little wobbly, but once you compress and fit it, it shouldn't matter, right? Yeah, that should be fine. Center punch it. Uh, that way, the drill bit knows where to go, so I use the center punch. That's the dumbest thing I've ever done. <laughs> oh, we're in. Oh, we're good. We did it. Aha! More fuzzies. Next step. Get on there. Oh, that's perfect. So this guy is going to go right here to the middle bucket. This guy is going to go right here. Where's the other one at? Hang on. Nobody move. I'm missing a piece. Uh, uh, wait, where'd he go? Ah, I found it. It's right here. He's gonna go like here, to here, to there. Now, what am I gonna do with that? I already set up the PVC pipe with these markings right here. So what you're gonna wanna do is line up the PVC pipe like this, that way they're in line with each other, mark it, and then move it about a quarter of an inch. So this is how it looks like inside the bucket. The 45 degree elbow is kinda, it's not going straight down. So it's kinda an angle, so it creates a cyclone effect. You might have to bend it more, I'm not too sure, but that's why we're not gluing it. It's all an experiment. So I have the silicone, my neighbor gave me a bunch of them. I've never used it, and I feel like this is a good application. I'm gonna seal it, because you know, my holes are perfect that I made on the bucket, but just be extra safe, I'm gonna use this stuff. Put a little bit more right here. Perfect. The correct amount has been established. Should be enough, I feel like, maybe it can help. I don't know. Do it like this now. You could never even tell I possibly messed up. I'll spin it around, get the, get the silicone everywhere. Give it one good press now. All right, good, 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 good. All right, this is as close as I can get my camera in the bucket. You wanna put this guy pretty close to the edge. That way it creates that cyclone effect. And just smash it down like that. All right, it's perfect. So how this should work is it should swirl around going this way and landing on the bottom of the bucket, but this is the top, so it's a little reversed. But it should spin like this. Uh, some people attach this to the side wall with a screw, so we might do that as well then. It doesn't hurt to do it, right? So some people say don't use a light trick where you shine a light in the bucket to see the shadow of the object, but even on the inside you can see the letters of Home Depot, and it's right next to the H right there. So I feel like if I drill right there, I should be able to get the corner of the little nozzle. Hopefully. We'll find out. It did. It was perfect. It worked perfectly. Sweet. There it goes. Now it's set into the PVC. Now it's grabbed on there. Now this pipe won't move at all. So it sticks out just a hair, but ah, it should be fine, right? It's DIY. Why not? It's beautiful. So I want to use the hose from Harbor Freight. I'm gonna use this guy on this side. I'm gonna cut out a nice little hole for him to fit through. Just bam, YouTube magic, go. All you do, line it up, we just to push it through. Oh, come on, wait, hang on. Oop, we got it. Perfect, and then the hose goes right here. I'm gonna trim this off right here. 
with the razor blade, and that's gonna be a perfect fit. Because now it's just gonna boop. Ta da! So, all I've done is I cut this out and I stabbed it through it. So, it fits perfectly. It's just a little square with extra relief cuts, and the hose fits on it perfectly. Neat. I can't wait to use this tomorrow. It's like what? 2.30 in the morning right now, I'm gonna go to bed. So it's all ready to go, but I did think about it. I wanna add a window on here, so I'm gonna do that right now. I have some acrylic sheets, I'm gonna cut one up, and I'm gonna cut a hole out and just glue it on there and call it good. Straight edge. That's pretty close to all the lines matching up. And I think I can just cut this with a razor blade and it should be fine, hopefully. Um, I've never cut acrylic before, so we're gonna find out right now. Man, if I shatter this whole thing, that's gonna suck. This is really hard to cut. That got cracked pretty well, but that's okay. Okay, so I cut it out, and I cocked it, now we're gonna smash it on there. Call it good. Now, what we're gonna do is gently set it down on here, and just smash it in place and call it good. And now we have a little cool window. Right, we can probably test this right away anyways. It's fine. That should be fine to test right away, right? Yeah, that looks fine to me. Let me put you guys straight on here. Like this, so you can see. Whoa, that sounds crazy. It crushed the bucket. That's cool. A little powerful. All right, cool, so same setup except I made my own pressure relief valve. So it shouldn't collapse on itself anymore. We'll see how it works out though. We need to get a bigger hose, but it works. So I'm excited about that. Oh, well, you guys can see that in there. Other than needing to get a bigger hose, this works. So the first bucket where everything goes in, all the big stuff got collected. Nice. And in the shop vac is the fine dust that got collected as well. So it works. Best part, I didn't have a filter on it. You guys look around, there's no dust at all. So does it work? Yes. Should I upscale this? 100%. So proof of concept, the DIY Cyclone does work overall. I think this vacuum is too powerful for it, so that's why it kept collapsing, but it did separate the big stuff from the fine particles, and there's no dust in the shop, so this is five minutes after using the vacuum. Nothing. I can breathe. I don't feel like I'm choking anymore. So overall, does it work? Yes. Would I build it better? 100%. How should I do that? Well, I think if I just get a bigger hose, I should solve most of my problems. But I think the biggest issue is it's a small bucket. The, it just keeps collapsing. So if I get a bigger 55 gallon metal drum, that should 100% stop it from collapsing, especially with three horsepower or a little shop vac. It should work just fine. So if you guys did enjoy the video, do leave a like, subscribe and comment. Let me know what you guys would have done differently because there's many ways you can do this. And this is just the way I did it. So hope you guys enjoy the video. See you.